So welcome to our first webinar Wednesday. My name is Kylie and I'm a, an account manager at Cyber Data Pros. Today I have Matt Sherard. He is a data privacy and security analyst at Cyber Data Pros. And today we'll be talking about the roles of vulnerability scanning and um, why it's so important. Thanks for the introduction, Kylie. I'm glad that you're able to get those technical difficulties sorted out. <laughs> yeah. And uh, if anyone has any questions or what, uh, Wants to answer the poll, feel free to go ahead and do that. We'll definitely be doing a QA at the end. So if you have any questions, go ahead and feel free to submit those throughout this webinar. Great. Um, so Matt, why don't you tell us um, or give us an overview about what vulnerability scanning is and for anyone who might not know? All right. So vulnerability scanning is a method of assisting of assessing a security uh, uh, an organization's security posture. Um, it it is a um, assessment methodology in which you uh, scan a network or platform of te technology for any known software vulnerabilities or misconfigurations. Um, you do this by using uh, a vulnerability scanner, which is a piece of software that can be used on, like I said, a number of platforms or technologies, um, including you can use it to scan a network as a whole, you can use it to scan endpoints, you can use it to scan web applications, cloud assets, um, even, even infrastructure as code. Um, and when you're doing this, it runs thousands of tests um, against these different known vulnerabilities and uh, security misconfigurations um, to give you an overview of where the weaknesses are in your um, software and your configurations um, to help you understand your security posture as a whole. Um, it's a, one of the best proactive steps you can take as an organization to help improve your security posture. Um, and it is one that I think is probably the most key um, as an organization to really understand where your weaknesses are um, from a technical side. Um, so knowing all of that, why is it so important to conduct vulnerability scans regularly? As I kind of alluded to, it's, it's really one of the best information gathering um, exercises you can do on a technical level for understanding your security posture and where you are following um, following up short. Uh, you can't fix what you don't know is broken. Um, and so you can have a lot of really good uh, security tools in other regards. You can be running antivirus everywhere. You can have endpoint detection software. Um, but if you have, you know, if you have uh, vulnerabilities on endpoints where that are part of currently active campaigns that are being exploited by threat actors actively, you're leaving yourself wide open and no amount of expensive tools is going to prevent um, prevent threat actors from taking advantage of those opportunities. Um, it's also one of those things that is becoming incredibly commonplace for any large organization. It's kind of standard. Like I said, it's, it's a very good information gathering um, exercise. So if you are intending to do uh, business or work with any large Fortune 500 company, government entity, um, they are probably expecting to see that you're doing vulnerability scanning and you can produce vulnerability reports. Um, and if they are, if they are an organization that works with a government entity, or if they are a government entity, they may be under uh, regulatory statutory requirement uh, to do uh, vulnerability scan themselves and to partner with people who do vulnerability scanning or even more um, intensive security um, measures as well. So those are going to be things that if you want to do those, that kind of business, you're going to be expected to produce vulnerability reports. Um, and again, tying in with that, um, a lot of these big organizations are going to have expectations that you're going to meet certain, um, you're going to have certain information security certifications or reports, um, or you may just need compliance with uh, particular uh, particular uh, directives or standards. So if you are looking to achieve like an ISO 27001, get a SOC 2 report, um, be in compliance with PCI or CISA, certain CISA directives, you're going to need to be doing regular vulnerability scanning. You're going to need to be able to prove that you're doing that. It is one of those things that in order to satisfy certain clauses, it's well understood nowadays that you're going to have to do, be doing vulnerability scanning or it's just not going to pass muster. So what are some like best practices that you can recommend to us? Um, first and foremost is the regularity with which you do vulnerability scanning. Um, you should be doing them quarterly. That's kind of the industry standard. Um, if you're a large organization, you should probably do, be doing it more frequently than that because you're going to have 
enough endpoints and enough technologies, enough um, variants where you can have configuration drift, you're going to have um, vulnerabilities that you're going to have missed because of timing <laughs> previously. Um, and so you, you probably don't want to do it more often than that. You just have a bigger footprint. Um, mm -hmm. But quarterly is generally the industry standard and the, really the bare minimum. Um, additionally, if you are a software development company at all, you should probably incorporate vulnerability uh, scanning into your SDLC. Um, there's a huge push nowadays to uh, shift left when it comes to vulnerability scanning. Do be doing vulnerability scanning earlier in your uh, development process. Um, so that way you're not pushing insecure code to your production environment. Um, there's lots of tools now that can do that as well. Um, one of our partners, Tenable, actually um, is great for that. Um, their, their whole web application scanning suite provides a, a great um, insight into um, scanning code, um, especially um, your infrastructure as code. Uh, so th that's definitely a big um, shift that we're seeing and we're recommending now is to try to shift left to your vulnerability scanning practices. Um, and then another huge uh, best practice is to make sure that you're actually sifting through the, the data that you're getting back from vulnerability scans and prioritizing what is the most active risk. Um, you can do that through, and one of the ways that we do it is through things like CISAs, KEVs, the known exploitable vulnerabilities. These are vulnerabilities that aren't just theoretical vulnerabilities. These are ones that we're seeing actively being exploited in the wild. They have known exploits associated with them, not just theoreticals. Um, and they're being used, they've been used currently or in the past. Um, also, any large in the news campaign, anything that's being exploited um, in that way, also prioritize those. Um, again, that's something that is, um, that's very important. And it can be, can be a good bit of work. Um, so it's important that you have a mature security team um, or that you, you consult with the right outside parties who are on top of that kind of thing. Um, and then uh, lastly, one that's relatively basic, but still not enough people do, is do as many authenticated scans as you can. Doing an unauthenticated scan across your network um, without credentials, without that um, privileged access um, gives you some information, but without doing authenticated scans, you really can't get into the nuts and bolts of where your vulnerabilities are. Um, and the remediation process is going to be a lot less valuable without that kind of authentic, without those authenticated scans. So while we're on this topic, can you give us a uh, real life example of where a time you found critical vulnerabilities um, that the client had no idea about until they did their first scan? Yeah, the one that stands out to me in my mind the most is um, one time we started doing vulnerability scanning for a particular client um, and we found a router, a cheap off, it, it, it confounded us for a while to figure out what it was that we were finding here, but it was a cheap, cheap as can be off the shelf router that they had bought. Oh my a God. Mishmash, a mishmash of parts that we couldn't figure, that, that perplexed us to what it was um, that, they, that they had bought to use for a very specific process with a very um, specific um, set of other tools. Um, and this very, very cheap, very out of date router um, was leaving an open back door on their network um, that was very, very easily exploitable. Um, and so our, our number our number one recommend them, recommendation to them was just please throw this router away, for the love of God. They didn't realize that they had this easily exploitable black door that um, could be taken advantage of by really any, um, any basic threat actor. Um, and then another thing we see a lot of that you find surprising is everyone thinks they have really good patch management or at least satisfactory patch management until you start doing vulnerability scans. Um, and it's not, it's, yeah. it's incredibly uh, off. Yeah. It's, it's incredibly like often that we find uh, people, well, organizations that have just a myriad of endpoint devices that haven't been updated in years. They have people who are regularly using their endpoints that have, that have been dodging OS updates for two plus years, um, which is crazy, but it's way more often, way more common than you think, even among organizations that think they have good patch management. Yeah, it's always a real good shock um, to anyone who starts their vulnerability scanning, seeing that um, they have members of their IRC team that haven't updated their, their desktop OS in a year and a half. So um, that's always a valuable little piece of information for them. Um, 
Well, since uh, we're about almost time for, um, it's almost time up, so I guess we'll wrap this up. But let's move on to Q&A. So we have our question chat box open if anybody has any questions for Matt to answer within the next few minutes. Oh, okay, I have a question from Heidi. She said, how long does a vulnerability scan take? Matt? That can, that can really vary. Um, some of them take just a couple minutes sometimes. It really is gonna depend on your scope and your depth of your vulnerability scans um, and how much access you give the scanner itself. They can range from a few minutes um, to, they can take several hours. Um, yeah, a compl if you're scanning just one one or two assets and you're not doing a thorough scan, it can just take a few minutes. If you're doing more complex scanning and you have um, significantly more uh, hosts and assets, it can it can take a, a good part of a day. Uh, but it's really wow. going to depend on scope and depth, really. Do we have any other questions for the last two minutes? I think. I think we're good. I think you covered it all. No. Oh, what tools do you recommend for this? Um, so there's a, there's a number of different tools on the market. Um, I think the two most popular are probably going to be Tenable um, and Qualys. Uh, but I we personally here use um, Tenable, Nessus, and we actually are an MSSP partner with them. They are one of the better vendors on the market. Um, well, that's it for the Q and A, I guess. So um, I would just like to thank everyone for joining our webinar. Um, this is a wrap for our uh, webinar Wednesday series. Um, be sure to follow us on LinkedIn for the latest update on our next one. And this webinar will be live on YouTube um, by the end of the week. So be on the lookout for that if you want to rewatch. And you can also visit our website at cyberdatapros.com for more information. Thank you. Matt, you want to say your byes? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thanks for joining. See you guys next time. Thank you guys. Bye.